Hi, it's Ash from Wingtips and welcome to this toe side breakdown. What I want to cover first in this breakdown is why toe side is one of the skills that you should learn in order to progress. Before I do that, I just want to mention that you can avoid properly learning toe side riding by learning to foot switch to toe side and then immediately jibing. There are two things that are problematic with this approach. One is you just willfully decided to not learn a fundamental wing falling skill and this will damage your progression later. And two, it's actually harder to learn to switch to toe side than it is to just learn toe side riding in the first place. So why should you learn toe side? Well, there are a few reasons. One, it can be very useful to be able to ride toe side wave riding. You run toe side on the way out through the waves and then jibe into your preferred stance on the face of the wave to ride back in. Two, when learning to tack, it's much easier to learn to tack back into your preferred stance. Three, later skills like a 360 require that you can ride both normal and toe side as you travel around the 360. Four, once you've learned to jibe to toe side and can ride toe side, you can then learn the jibe back to your normal stance, which is a really fun and flowy jibe that feels really nice to do. And five, it's a core skill and part of your main skill set for winging. One last thing I want to just briefly cover before we start talking about technique, and that is the very common comments you see online from wingers saying that they are still struggling to learn to jibe after a long time of trying. Very often these people have actually mastered the jibe completely. The problem is they can't ride away in a toe side stance. This isn't failing at jibing, it's failing at toe side and why toe side deserves a breakdown video of its own. We should also briefly talk about gear and the only thing that I think is relevant to toe side is the topic of foot straps. Now what I would say about foot straps is if you're sailing in very flat water and you're not dealing with chop and waves or disturbed water then you can learn to toe side without using foot straps without any problem at all. If you ride in choppy water or waves or disturbed water then running a, f a set of front foot straps can be very very useful in just giving you an anchor point to the board and helping you with your balance in the toe side stance. Let's just quickly look at our normal stance as I want to point out some things that we need to be aware of when we go toe side. Firstly, if we look at the board angle, we can see that we have a lean to windward. This keeps the board tracking straight and drives the power into the foil efficiently. If we look at my feet, we can see the front foot is in the strap and the back foot is angled straight across the board with the arch of the foot close to the center line of the board. This gives me board control of the board angle, either to windward or leeward. If we look at my body position, I'm standing relatively straight, but I have my weight lent out to windward to counterbalance the pull of the wing. We're going to jibe round now into toe side, and the first thing I want you to focus on is my back foot and look what happens as I come round into the toe side position. What you're going to notice here is I move my toes to point more forward. Right there. And that's just me adjusting my stance so it's actually more comfortable for me to twist round and hold the wing. Because if I keep my foot in that straight across the board position then it's way harder for me to twist round and hold the wing in the toe side stance. So by adjusting that back foot and pointing my feet forwards, and then I need another adjustment there. So I've even moved my foot even more. In fact, I've moved it up the board a little bit as well, which we'll come on to later. I've actually pointed my feet more towards the front of the board. I've pointed my toes more towards the front of the board. And this means I have to twist less in my body in order to be able to sail in the toe side stance. The other thing I want you to notice is that as I kind of power up here and get more into the toe side position, the board is going to lean over again towards windward. And in fact, it already is leaning over slightly towards wind windward, but it's not as noticeable as I would like in this clip at the moment. And the reason that I'm doing that is I'm trying to get to 
drive my body weight through the board into the foil and I don't want the foil um, sailing flat I don't want the board sailing flat because when your board is sailing flat it can turn left or right very easily whereas if you lean it over towards windward then it starts to track straight and there's much less opportunity for it to turn downwind whilst all the time I'm sailing it flat like I am at the moment in this particular clip it can go either way I'm not actually trying to point upwind that far in this particular clip but if I was you would see the board start to heel over much more towards the windward side because I want to drive that power down through the foil and I also don't want the, the board to naturally hit a bump or something and start to turn downwind so I want that board lean on there when I'm really driving upwind in order to ensure the board tracks straight and I can drive the power down through the board into the foil. You can see here I haven't actually twisted that far. I've got the wing held fairly lightly in front of me. I'm not pulling in that hard and I'm just basically sailing fairly gently downwind in the toe side stance. Now the reason I moved my foot forward is because very often in the toe side position you are driving more off of your back foot than you are your front foot. It's just a natural thing that happens from your stance changing. So to stop the foil from kind of going on an upward glide and breaching onto the surface, because I'm weighting my back foot harder, I've actually moved my back foot forwards, which has rebalanced my foil and allowed me to weight my back foot a little bit more without the foil coming up and stalling. Okay, so let's move on from this particular clip and look at a clip where I'm really driving up wind much more and we can see a much more aggressive toe side stance in order to hold the board on track and drive more up wind. Okay, so in this clip we can see that I'm driving really quite hard up wind. Now this was a video that we did where we were actually doing an up wind run to then do a downwinder on the swell and in this instance I'm really pushing hard to try and get upwind and you can see the board angle I've got here is really quite significant in the toad side stance and that's because I'm really driving hard upwind and you can also see that I'm pulling in my back hand towards my hip so I've kind of stood in the toad side stance and then I'm pulling that back hand in towards my hip and actually the 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 front hand which you can't really see but it's fully extended so I'm actually pushing my front arm out away from me a lot of the time to try and get the front of the wing out and into the into the wind so I can get a better angle on the wing to allow me to drive upwind but you can see there's really quite a significant angle on the board here the other thing I want to do is just show you my feet in this clip which is quite difficult because the sun is in the wrong direction and I'm wearing completely black boots but what I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze this at a particular point where there's a bit of lighting on my feet and just show you what's going on with my back foot okay so we're going to zoom in here and enhance and you'll get an idea of what's going on okay so you notice that my foot position here is again quite a distance up the board towards the nose and this is because I've got quite a lot of weight on that back foot in order to angle the board over to windward. And you'll also, also note that my foot has moved more towards the windward rail as well in order to help get that weight over so I can angle the board over. But because the only way I can angle the board to windward is by weighting that back foot, I've had to move it up the board towards the nose because otherwise if I put weight on my back foot, I'm going to raise the foil up and breach. I can't put weight on my front foot because my front foot is still in that strap and is on the opposite side of the board. And therefore if I put weight on that foot or any more weight that I need to on that foot, then it's going to level the board out. So I actually need to be pushing through my toes on my front foot and then putting weight onto my back foot in order to get that board lent over to windward. But in order to achieve that, my back foot has got to move up the board towards the nose. Otherwise, I'm just going to cause my foil to climb and we're going to get a breach. So that's the thing I wanted to highlight here. Then to finish this section off, I'm just going to do a toe side to heel side jibe here. 
which is one of the reasons to learn toe side because that jibe is really nice and you'll notice me adjust my back foot back again once I'm in that hillside stance. Okay so in this next clip we're going to jibe from goofy stance into riding goofy toe side and because of the sun direction it's going to be much easier to see my foot positioning for my back foot in this particular clip so here we go into the jibe I'm just going to do an ordinary jibe and use the swell here to just float along a little bit and then take my time to get into the toe side stance okay there we go Okay, so you can see here that my back foot is actually quite a significant way across the board onto the windward rail and that's given me the opportunity to angle the board over and get a decent angle to the board so I can track nice and straight in the toe side stance. Now, I'm actually not going to stay in toe side for very long because goofy stance isn't my preferred stance and all I'm looking for here is an opportunity to hit a little bump or piece of swell and then I'm going to switch my feet and go back to my preferred stance and that's one of the reasons why I haven't actually moved my foot forward or readjusted my back foot in this situation because I'm actually going to leave my back foot back there to give me a little bit more opportunity to get some pop from the board when I decide to do the foot switch which I think is coming up on this little piece of swell here I'm almost certain that that's what I would use to do this yeah there we go and just swapped my feet over on that bit of swell and then I'm just going to readjust my feet here a little bit and then sail away in my preferred stance. But I just wanted to show there that um, the back foot there was quite a way across the board and that was helping me with the, with the board angle and keeping the board tracking nice and straight and not turning downwind. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is the angles of your body and flexibility because I think that's one topic that really does deserve some discussion. Okay, I just want to return to this clip where I'm driving hard upwind because this is when your body is the most twisted when you're riding toe side. And I want to point out how the shoulders and the hips are opposed to one another so I'm just going to freeze it briefly and just put some arrows on here and show you what's going on okay so hopefully you can see my hips are facing in the direction of travel or more or less the direction the board is going although slightly upwind of that and then if we look at my shoulders they're twisted round facing towards the wing and this angle can be as high as 90 degrees to your hips and that can be quite difficult to maintain if you're not a particularly flexible person and let's be honest a lot of wingers are in their 40s, 50s, 60s and beyond and flexibility may not be our strongest suit. So one of the things that you really do need to work on if you want to ride toe side is flexibility or your ability to twist at the waist and get to up to 90 degrees so your shoulders are at 90 degrees to your hips and that will really help with being able to twist into the toe side position when you're on the water. There is a way to ride in the toe side stance without having to twist as much and that's the thing I'm going to show at the end of this video and it's just by repositioning your feet you can significantly reduce the amount of twist that your upper body needs to do in order to sail in the toe side stance. So that's what I'm going to go through next. So here I'm in my normal stance and what I'm doing is I'm adjusting my foot across the board so that the heel is on the centre line and that my foot is pointing forwards really. It's, it's no longer across the board but it's pointing quite a long way forwards. And then having got into that position I'm then going to go for my jibe into toe side. And this is on my new 60 litre board. I'll be doing a video on this at some point. But, uh, that's for another time. Okay, so that's the jibe done. Now we're going to come down and look at the foot again. You can see here that basically both of my feet here are pointing forwards 
and they're no longer ac across the board but then and I see me adjusting it there to point even more forwards so I'm kind of standing like my hips are towards the front of the board and that allows me to have much less twist in my body for sailing toe side and this really does help kind of ease you into the loosening up your hips and loosening up your shoulders and being able to get into the toe side stance rather than trying to do it in your normal stance with your back foot 90 degrees across the board which is really quite difficult so this is like an interim way of getting used to selling in toe side but without all of the twist okay so that wraps up another breakdown video this time on toe side I hope you found it useful I hope you don't mind that that last piece of footage was a little bit dark and dull unfortunately we're in winter in the UK and I can't always get lovely blue skies like in the clip that's playing at the moment but hopefully you're able to see the foot positioning and what was going on there and I'll see you on the next breakdown video or the next review that we cover thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe as uh, we have lots of people watching the videos but not that many subscribing to the channel so I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe. Thanks.